micro-certifications, and continual learning. This is a clip from our Bernie Chats with Bart Zick, Certified Resume Strategist. Here we go. There is a trend now for micro certifications. So I'm interested in, in knowing about that. So when I said I'm done with school, uh, it doesn't mean I'm done with learning. Mm -hmm. In today's world, and we can see how quickly technology changes and how quickly things change in general, mm -hmm. my time would not be wisely used and my resources wouldn't be wisely invested to pursue another university degree. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because it takes between two and four years, mm -hmm. depending on, on what you're doing. And during that time, the world is going to change tremendously. For sure. And there are certain organizations that really stay up to date. Some, some technical colleges, some uh, technical institutes uh, do stay on top of these things. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes universities, <clears throat> and I hate to say this, but they don't. Mm -hmm. But going back to what I said about micro certifications, these are things that you can earn certificates, you can earn diplomas, uh, you can earn things of a similar nature that are respected and accepted by employers. And I mentioned, you know, in our discussion a moment ago about things like being Cisco certified or Microsoft certified. Mm -hmm. These are examples of micro certifications. Mm -hmm. You can take them online. Right. In many cases, you have to do a, a short case study at the end with mm -hmm. a team. Mm -hmm. You might need to do some sort of an examination, but you don't need to invest two years or, or whatever, a full-time study and put your career on the back burner. Right. So this is becoming more popular and more and more accepted by companies. And we've mentioned uh, previously things like LinkedIn learning, mm -hmm. like you know having a library card and being able to access that for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and then putting your certificates in your LinkedIn profile. So you know maybe it isn't the equivalent of a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, but it's evidence to any type of employer that you are committed to professional development and continuous learning. Yes. You're signaling just by doing that to your employer that you are flexible, that you are up to date, and that you are continuously developing. A mutual acquaintance of ours who teaches social media was asked by a college to create a course. And he said, okay, great. When do you want to implement the course? And they said, well, it won't be for at least six months, maybe 12. And he said, well, whatever I create is going to be outdated then. If there's a case where, where certification uh, is going to be probably a lot more current or at least provide you with what's current at that time. Absolutely. And especially if it's related to social media. I mean, I work on, on YouTube and mm -hmm. I can't comment on, on other platforms, but the algorithms change all the time, mm -hmm. right? For sure. uh, the interface changes. So chances are exactly what you said. You know, what you learn, on, it, it, learning this type of thing right now, it's a snapshot in time. Right. Six months down the road, the reality is going to look very much different compared to the snapshot you took six months ago. So there's a few great arguments for micro certifications, as you're saying. One, the globalism of it and the current information that you're getting when you're doing such a certification. Absolutely. Another example is you can get certified in Microsoft Office. And that's a valuable certification. Oh, that would be. That would be because oh. I believe the statistic is something like it's almost like the brain. We only use 10% of what's possible. The, the features that you have uh, yeah. in, so, in well, that suite of, of software. Yeah, whatever you're doing, people, with Microsoft Office, there's probably 10 times more that you could be doing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's really and, worthwhile to take a course. You know, but look at it this way. Uh, I'm actually starting to, to take a, a course through LinkedIn Learning uh, on Microsoft Word. Mm. because I'm interested in, in being able to get to know the design features of, mm -hmm. of Microsoft uh, Word in more nice. detail. Uh, and, you know, I'm using uh, Microsoft Office or Microsoft Word, I think it's 16, version 16. But look at all the other prior versions and look at now offices are using Microsoft Office 365. 
So whatever you get certified in right now, mm -hmm. by the time you finish your certification, there's going to be another version of it. <laughs> Chances so, are. Chances you're are. always playing catch up. For sure. You're always playing catch up. So this is why being able to demonstrate, not just talk about it, but show and demonstrate that you are dedicated continuous learning and development is a key attribute that mm -hmm. employers are looking for. That, and that makes a lot of sense. Going back to our conversation about uh, gaps on your resume. Right. Well, you know what? If you're out of work, get off the couch or at least bring your laptop to the couch and start something that you can get certified in mm -hmm. and put it on your LinkedIn profile so that when you say to your employer or your future employer during a job interview, well, during this time, even though I was laid off, I decided to invest in my knowledge, my development, to learn new skills, and I did. And you can see that my achievement by looking at my LinkedIn profile, where I have included my certifi certificates, and you can check it physically. If you're if you're looking for a job, and you are interested in taking some kind of a certification course, you could look back and think to yourself, or look back through your records and say, okay, what did I see often in the requirements for the job? Did I see Salesforce certification? Oh, okay, maybe that's a good one for me to get because the positions I'm applying for will appreciate that. It'll, it'll work in, in my favor. And you know, when, when you do this, when you commit yourself, when you, when you embody that mindset, uh, just like what you're doing, you know, looking, getting educated, looking, getting educated, certified and, and following that path. Mm. So you, you look back at what you've been doing in your past. And this is how you can develop your career to something that you really, that is really you, that reflects you and your values and, and, and just, it, it's you. Then you don't have to worry about the work-life balance thing because mm -hmm. it's just your life. Right. Uh, pay attention to what you really ex excelled in. And I don't want to say be happy because that's, you, you, happiness is, is not, is different. Right. What you excelled in, where you provided the most value to your employer, to your customers, to, to people, what were you the best in? And then build on that. And then also look at, you know, what prevented you from getting what you wanted and address those weaknesses. When you do that, you're supporting the fittest. You're developing mm -hmm. that and it's growing and it's becoming better and it's matching your talents. It's matching your strengths. And so, you know, we can look at the past and we can't change it, but we can influence the results by taking what we identified and analyzed from our past, working on developing it, and then thereby shaping the future that we envision that is the best for us. And it's a gradual evolutionary process. That's how I got to where I am right now. And I think that's what I suggest to my students who are confused about their career path. Thanks for listening. To learn more about BART and KISS Academy, check the show notes below.